You're listening to Safer Travel Talk, the podcast to inform, inspire, and provide insight into the world of travel. Hi, uh, welcome to Safer Travel Talk. It's a podcast series where we talk to um, travellers and travel-related companies and communities, and we start to delve a little bit into travel and into the mindset of other travellers. And today I'd like to to welcome um, We Drifters. Hello. Hello, hi, thank you so much for having me. Um, so hi, I'm Nordia, the founder of We Drifters. Uh, we're a premium sleepwear brand uh, inspired by travels essentially. And we specialize in bamboo sleepwear, which is infused with an insect repellent treatment, which keeps insects away. Fantastic. So let's, well, let's start at the beginning really. So let's go back to um, some of your travels and some of your experiences, and then we'll lead on to where you got the idea for the brand and the, the concept and just a little insight and background about your travels and your experiences. Yeah, sure. So I've, I've always loved traveling, but I think when I was growing up, I was more kind of traveling closer to home. So I did a lot of travels around Finland, for instance, which is where my mum's from. So I've got a lot of family there and we grew up going to the summer cottage and being by the lake. And I just loved getting out in nature. So I think that is where I guess some of my early experiences kind of stemmed my interest of going traveling. Um, but it wasn't until I was kind of in my early 20s when I was really kind of on the fence about whether to go backpacking. Um, a lot of my friends had gone uh, after university uh, doing kind of gap years and uh, taking time out and I had just gone straight from university straight to work and worked for a few years and kind of felt I guess I missed the boat a little bit with that um, and I wasn't really sure if the whole kind of backpacking thing would be my thing. I had quite a few kind of concerns and worries about if the reality of it would be for me, um, but it was always something kind of in the back of my mind. So I took the plunge to go after kind of working really long hours and kind of feeling a bit stuck with, with what I was doing with my uh, day job. So I decided to go to Southeast Asia for a few months. Um, I actually went with two friends, but also did a few bits. So there and I think that was really the trip that really kind of changed a lot of things for me and sparked my true love of travel. Um, it was an incredible trip. We went everywhere from kind of Thailand, uh, Burma, Cambodia, Laos, Malaysia, Singapore, um, I'm probably missing a few countries but all over the region and it was just phenomenal and, and so many different levels uh, personally but also kind of um, what led to what I'm doing with my business now. But it was that trip, I think, that kind of led me to seeing the long term benefits of travel and how it can really impact you. So I kind of vowed to continue making sure I could travel in some form, in some way, at least every year. So since then, I've traveled a bit in Central America, um, traveled from different sides of America over five weeks, um, did, did various things in Europe as well. And more recently, or, or just before the pandemic, I was a few weeks in South Korea as well. So um, it's definitely become part of my lifestyle and something that I value and want to keep doing whenever it's obviously possible and, and safe to do so. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, the diversity um, comes across straight away in the travel. I mean, so many different places, so many different cultures. Is it the natural world that you're going for? Is it the interaction with people? Is it finding out more about the country's history? What is it that kind of draws you to a place? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. I think it's a combination of things. I think um, for me, the places that feel most different to where we are here, I think are the most appealing. Um, so whether that's you know the landscape or the culture or the people, just I think immersing in a world that is so different to what we're used to um, I find fascinating and I feel like you learn so much from those different worldviews and perspectives and the people you meet um, but just as you kind of touched on I, I love kind of getting to know locals and finding out about about a country that way and I love kind of obviously doing, doing bits of sightseeing as well and especially with um, around nature and um, doing kind of excursions wherever I'm going but but I think it's really kind of trying to get to the heart of a country and a lot of that I think is just going off on your own and talking to locals and trying to do the the more kind of non-touristy things um, so all of that I find really appealing but but I think 
it's, it's also the kind of variety. So I think a country which offers a lot of different types of things um, are probably the things that kind of go quite high up on my list. Um, and admittedly also places that are maybe a bit less traveled. So feel a bit more unique and feel like um, you're really getting to experience something that maybe not that many people have. Mm, yeah, so it's finding out, finding those little corners of the world that are still are still a little bit untapped or are still, you know, yeah. there's, there's a little bit the, the, to explore. So would you say you, you're, you're an adventurous person by nature? Would you say that that's something that, you know, you feel confident enough to go? How did that evolve? Because obviously your travels are obviously across the numerous years. And do you think you've got more confident? Do you think it's helped you in your mindset? How do you think, and relating to safety as well, because obviously with the charity and the work that we're doing, how much preparation do you do and what do you consider from a safety point of view? Yeah, so so I think, I guess to answer the part about the kind of independence and doing it kind of on our own, I, I think I've always been very independent and that's something that I've just have a, had a kind of natural inbuilt thing on. But, but I wouldn't say I was the most adventurous growing up. I think that definitely has built through uh, traveling and I think getting that confidence. I, I think once you do your first, um, I guess trip that you yourself would consider more adventurous for you. I think that then builds the confidence to do other trips because it feels a lot easier. You've kind of got less barriers to doing other things because uh, you've done it once, you've learned a lot and you feel more comfortable, um, I guess, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. So, so the independence was definitely there, but the adventurous side I think has uh, evolved as I've gone to more places. And uh, you definitely kind of get a rush when you're pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and um, having these experiences. So I think that then leads to, to do more of that. Um, but I think in terms of kind of the preparation, I, I think it's a good balance of trying to be as prepared as you can in terms of researching uh, where you're going to understand what you need to know. And from a health point of view, um, especially for me, because I'm quite allergic to bug bites. So it was important to figure out, you know, what insects are in a certain region, which ones might carry disease and what are the kind of precautions I might have to take uh, when visiting certain countries. So, so I did do, I guess, that kind of preparation to know what I might need to take with me before going and what I might need to know about certain countries, whether it's um, cultural differences and etiquettes that I might need to be aware of or um, just being having kind of heightened awareness around, around certain things that might be going on in the region. So, so I think there is that kind of awareness, education and preparation beforehand, but then I guess not letting that uh, overwhelm you and scare you into actually going, it's kind of then being sensible and um, using what you've researched to then kind of enjoy the country in a, in a safe way, I think. So, well, that leads us beautifully onto um, we drifters and you said you're, you're quite allergic to to bites and to insects. So let's tell us about how the we drifters came about. Yeah, so I mean, I'd always kind of not done too well with insects, um, but I'd never had a kind of a full blown allergic reaction. I I'd just had kind of big swellings when I grew up. Um, I used to have yeah huge swellings from any bites, even in Europe. But when I went to Southeast Asia, um, that was the first time where, um, I think it was when I was in Vietnam, I just woke up one morning and I was covered in hives, which are kind of red blotchy patches all over my body. And it was quite concerning at the time, actually, because I had, I had no idea it was hives and I'd never experienced it before. And I didn't know what to do, where to go. Um, my friends were worried it was contagious, which luckily it wasn't. Um, so I ended up going to a pharmacy and then figuring out what it was and getting, getting some creams for that. Um, but that, that was kind of my first bad experience of, of the trip. Um, but then I think it was a few weeks later, I was in Laos and we were in the first region where there was risk of uh, contracting malaria. So I'd started taking my antimalarials and unfortunately I had a bad reaction to those, which uh, meant I couldn't leave, leave my bed for a few days and was, was really badly ill. But it meant I had to stop taking my antimalarials and completely rely on just not getting bitten in the first place, which, which I was trying to do anyway because I, I had the hives already and, and obviously bugs are a nuisance um, and you know I'd come fairly prepared to be honest we we had uh, repellent sleeping bag liners which we were using which kind of square mummy shaped 
uh, sleeping bags essentially but very thin fabric with insect repellent built in and they worked really well um, and we know that because I had one friend who didn't have one and was covered in bed bugs um, <laughs> one night when the two of, uh, two of us were not but when you're obviously kind of traveling for a long period of time trying to squeeze yourself into that very restrictive liner and kind of sleep like a mummy is just not very comfortable and I think at that point because I was obviously not taking my intermediaries it was just not very practical trying to fit into it every night or worry about it when you got out of bed and things like DEET are also not nice for long periods of time they're very sticky in hot climates and um, but it was essentially the combination of all of that that kind of gave me the idea of having something comfortable that you could wear, but that would also keep the insects away. So similar to the liner that I'd been using, but just more in a kind of pajama set. So that was really the inspiration for the product, which um, I then kind of went away and researched and developed. But I think another thing worth mentioning is um, it was the whole travel experience that also really kind of shaped the brand that I wanted to build around the business. So traveling was such, such an amazing experience, um, a bit cliche, but kind of life-changing in a lot of ways. And I think when I came back home, I wanted to continue that sense of freedom and connect with other people who'd kind of gone through those experiences. So as much I was, as I was kind of developing this product, I was as keen on creating a brand and a, and a community, I think, which, um, would resonate with people who've experienced that and to kind of build, I, I guess to kind of continue a lot of the things you learn from travel and the ethos is uh, from when you're kind of then back at home and hopefully then planning your next trip as well. Fantastic. So I'll just explain to, to, to our audience what the product actually is that you've built and you've created. Yes, so the product that we launched is a unisex version of um, anti-insect sleepwear. So it's essentially a sleepwear set which is made from bamboo fabric, but we infuse it with um, a special anti-insect treatment and it keeps 90% of biting insects away. So mosquitoes, but also bed bugs, midges, uh, a whole range of insects. Um, and the way we've designed it is really with sleep in mind. So the top and trousers can actually attach together to form a onesie. So you've got the fabric around your waist. The trousers also have stirrups to keep fabric around your ankles and the top has bum holes to keep it around your wrists, which um, as many people know is kind of where you're prone to get a lot of bites. And then we sell the set with socks to keep feet covered, but also a pillowcase for behind your head, which actually converts into a storage bag, which everything can then fit into. So it's a great kind of all-in-one alternative to a lot of the other kind of traditional repellents that you have on the market. So I'm just interested in how travel has given you, or whether it has given you the confidence to do this brand. I know it inspired the idea, but would you say that your experiences traveling the world gave you the confidence and the right attitude in order to start a business for yourself? Yes, yeah, absolutely. I, I think when you travel and you're, um, I guess, pushing yourself out of your comfort zone and learning a lot, about, I mean, one yourself, because there's a lot of kind of self-reflection time, I think, when you're traveling, but then also you're learning about the world around you and these new environments. And and I think that whole kind of learning growth process, um, I guess develops you as a person and then develops that resilience and confidence to do new things. Mm -hmm. So even though starting a business is, is not quite the same as traveling, it's still pushing you out of your comfort zone and still, going into new territories you may not have done before and still um, has a lot of uncertainty around it, which, which is exciting, but can be daunting. And I think that's where there are some parallels with when you're, when you're traveling to new places and you, know, you don't quite know what to expect, but you're also excited at the same time. Um, so I, I think for me, it definitely did um, give me that, that confidence. And I think also just push that push I think that I needed as well to just go for it and not regret anything because I think when you travel you realize what what things kind of most important to you um it, it can often make you be more present and appreciate the kind of smaller things in life so I think similarly to like starting a business you then you don't really regret anything and you think you may as well do the things you're kind of passionate about and just go for it and, and see what happens which which I think then helps with that confidence of knowing that you're doing what you're, what you're kind of meant to be doing. Mm. Yeah so I think it sounds like your travels there was almost a lot of soul searching and finding out more about you as an individual and 
So I'm just I'm curious to how this idea, how you knew it was the right idea to to progress with when you got back and how that kind of because, you know, I've, I've known from my travels that you go away and you have a thousand ideas and you sat on a beach or you sat in a bar and you're, you're having a conversation and, you know, a thousand ideas go through your head. But how did you know that this was the one to pursue or the one that, that had meaning for you that you could then create something when you got back? Yeah, that, that's a good question. So I think you're right. You do you get inspired a lot when you're traveling and you do get hundreds of ideas. And I think for me, this was an idea that I'd personally experienced and had such problems with and was genuinely looking for a solution. So when I came back, I, I don't think I came back thinking, you know, this is the one idea. This is the thing that I'm going to pursue. I just started really researching to see what else was on the market. I was trying to understand why the thing that I had an idea on didn't exist. So I was trying to work out why hadn't someone done that or was there something better um, for personal reasons, just wanting something that I could use myself. And I think when I started realizing, okay, I really think there is a gap in the market for this. And actually, if this is gonna really help me, there's gonna be a lot of other people who have experienced something similar and it could really help them too. So it kind of became bigger than myself because I realized the potential it could have. And I was also, I think, just so excited, excited about the brand as well, the, the idea of creating a brand that was inspired by my travels. And um, I could, I guess, have a lot of creative uh, fun with. So I think it was the combination of just being excited about it in general, but then having a product that I thought would actually make a difference to people's lives and would be kind of worth pursuing even even if it didn't you know launch it was just kind of worth my time to see what would uh, become and I think I just broke that down into a lot of steps as well and I guess tried to focus on just what are the first things I need to do to get it going and um, just seeing kind of how it goes rather than being overwhelmed and putting too much pressure on what had to come out of what I was doing. Mm. Mm. It's interesting because it's it's certainly not an easy thing to start a business and it's um you know, it's a lot of time and effort. And I think it's, you know, I, I take my hat off to a lot of people who who have done that. And it seems quite common that people have gone traveling and become inspired and, and created something from that. So I think there's a lot to be said by the, the, you know, taking time out to really find out more about yourself and what's out there in the world. Um, tell me how the brand is, is evolving, because it's obviously very close to my heart with travel and all of that. Um, but it's, you know, the, the inspirational aspects of the brand and how you're pushing that into, you know, new markets or how you're, you're inspiring people to buy, obviously, your product, but also to go traveling because it's obviously it's something that you wear when you're traveling. It's something that you wear in different countries. So how's the brand evolving and how are you pushing that side of it? So a lot of what we're doing to inspire people to travel and, and I think, I guess, teaching people about the positive benefits it can have on people's lives is through the content we create. So a lot, a lot of it might be on social media or the blogs, um, but we'll be sharing, I guess, stories from our own experiences and also reposting and sharing a lot of stories from our communities. So not just the influencers, but just, you know, individuals who are traveling and having great experiences and just trying to share that in a kind of uh, collaborative friendly way so that people can get inspired and learn about um, you know how people are traveling and, and also representation has been really key for us to try and kind of showcase different types of travelers from all walks of life so that people feel more included um, one of the reasons I, I think probably didn't jump going traveling was I had you know concerns about whether you know I would fit in or kind of concerns around um, I guess the stereotypes of the people who usually go traveling and they're kind of certain barriers that I want to kind of break down and uh, help kind of showcase through the business. Um, and some of the other things that we're kind of looking to do in the future and, and did a little bit of before the pandemic were physical events. So we actually had um, an inspiring stories panel event where we had uh, people who'd traveled or kind of started businesses, but there's kind of travel insp inspiration behind what they were doing and they came and just shared their stories uh, with an amazing group of people who were there just to kind of listen and learn and that was great because 
I think storytelling is very powerful um, and it's a great way for people to kind of engage and meet people from the community in, in a physical space as well. So that's something I'd definitely love to kind of keep doing when it's possible to do so, so that it, it's a mixture of online sharing, but also physically connecting with people. Um, so if, if we talk about the community, is there specific places that your sleepwear is, is a must? You know, there's specific countries that, that you would say, oh yeah, definitely, definitely, or this is not so bad, or, you know, have you, have you gone down that route to find out certain destinations? Yeah, I, I think we hear a lot about where people are planning to use it or have used it and great feedback. One of, one of the um, places close to, close to home is actually Scotland with the midges. Right. So especially this year with not many people going to do the international travel, obviously the, the staycation market is, is kind of booming and Scotland being so close is, is very popular and the midge season is awful so the sleep but is really good for that um but we also um in europe kind of france and the small kind of summer countries there's a lot of people uh using it there in italy and greece where mosquitoes very problematic even though there might not be a risk of malaria um but it's it, apart from that it's very very broad so everything from countries in africa to southeast asia to the caribbean um anywhere where insects are just such a nuisance and you just can't kind of seem to get away from them um, but also regions where there's a lot of water and lakes so Scandinavia in particular uh, there's a lot of lakes there a lot of mozzies and Canada as well so I feel like I've listed <laughs> the whole world there but um, there's, there's a lot of kind of key regions that I think do come up quite often for us. No, I think it's important and it's it's something that seriously when I I mean we've been in the travel community for sort of 19 years with the charity and there's, I'm surprised again and again by certain things that I said I still haven't considered and this is you know it's not until you get to a destination it's like when we went to Australia and oh you need a you need a fly net and I did I thought oh yeah whatever you know and then certainly you go around certain parts of it and they you know it's ridiculous and you don't realize until you're in that situation what you actually need and obviously then it, it's too late for a point until you can get yourself some so i think it's uh, it's an amazing concept and a, and a wonderful idea and certainly you know if i go anywhere now i'd, I'd, I'd certainly <laughs> certainly consider um wearing something because it's whether you're prone to getting bitten or not i think there's there's still a um there's, there's still you know it's, it's something that's really important are there certain people that are prone to bites? Because I remember, say, you know, sleeping in 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 tents and in, in various things, and some of my friends would get bitten more than others. Is there is there certain is it is it the type is it a blood type or you know what kind of what what says oh I'm a I'm I'm a moddy <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's definitely truth to some people just get bitten more than others, and and funnily enough, um, we always see that with couples, there's always one that gets bitten and one that doesn't. Um, I don't know how that works out, but that's <laughs> that's the most frequent thing we get. There's always, always one. Um, but I believe it's something to do with the kind of scent um, and something in your blood that does affect it. So, so there is definitely truth to that, but I think there's still kind of more research being done to really understand it. Um, but I think it's, as you said, it's kind of important for everyone just to obviously prevent bug bites. And, and I think also people forget that Apart from uh, malaria, there's also so many other insect-borne diseases which you can't actually protect from. So stopping getting bitten is, is kind of important for everyone. So I think there's actually kind of an education piece that um, I mean we would love to be part of and do more on to actually educate more people around the importance of bite avoidance in certain regions and um, certain misconceptions as well around um, bug bites in general. Mm, definitely. Um, so let's go back to sort of travel and, you know, where do you see, where's, where's next on your bucket list? Where do you want to, when things open up, where do you want to go next? That is a good question. I, I used to have a huge list and I've kind of been revisiting it, um, trying to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, so I've got, I mean, I've got some friends and family who actually live abroad. So they're the first people on my list to go and visit. Um, but in terms of kind of more long-term bucket list, um, Oh, I, I would love to go back to China, actually. I was there briefly, but I would love to kind of uh, travel that whole region. It's such a big country and there's so many different parts to it. Um, and I love kind of Asian food as well. Um, but I, yeah, I would love to go there. And um, 
also South America. So Central America, I feel like I had a bit of a taste for, obviously a very different region, but there's obviously little bits of crossover. So I feel like I had a bit of a taste for what parts of South America might be like, and I would love to go there. But it's, again, such a big region where I've kind of felt I'd like to dedicate a big bulk of time to do it properly. So that's been one of the reasons why I just haven't been able to fit it in. But yes, I would absolutely love to go there. Um, and I think the other one, I, I haven't been to Africa and I would love to go kind of South Africa or um, Namibia or do some kind of safari. That's something that I just haven't experienced anything close to that and would, mm -hmm. would absolutely love to. But I think again, for those types of trips, you need a bit more kind of planning and time to do it properly. Um, so that's just why they haven't happened just yet. Yeah. Do you find, because um, you've come back, you've started a business, I know with the pandemic, it, it, it's difficult for anybody to travel, but do you feel that it's it's restricted you now on your travels or your adventures or your future, or do you think it's opened up a whole new world for you? I think for the business, it's kind of opened up um, opportunities to look outside of just travel, so the staycation market and people just allergic to insects at home. So it's probably proven to have, I guess, a, a few opportunities for that. And then I guess for me personally, um, it hasn't stopped my, I guess, want to go traveling or intentions or plans to, it's just delayed them, um, waiting till it's obviously possible. And I think I've had so much things going on with the business this year, it, it's you know not been the worst thing just to kind of focus on things back at home and then look forward to the times when we can travel again um and i think i think in terms of people it's going to be quite divided i think there's going to be people who you know are itching to get out when they can and will then fully make the most of it when it's possible and and you know probably have been bulking up things onto their bucket list uh, as we've been locked down and then i guess the other camp of people who, are, who will be a bit more cautious and maybe take a bit more time to kind of get out there um but i guess for those who, who will travel um in a way if, if it is less busy and less people traveling that that would be great to experience as well mm. Mm. definitely in a way i think it's 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 a difficult thing with the mindset of people now because as you say you've got the two camps where you know, people still feel confident and quite happy to go. Um, what interests me is, is when people come back from traveling. So what have you learned? And I know we've talked about starting the business and the confidence, but are there any things that you've brought back from traveling that you've incorporated into your daily life? That's a good question. I, th I think um, that exploratory mindset and um, being quite open-minded, because I think when you're traveling, you um you're obviously viewing new places and uh, appreciating everything you're seeing and you're also kind of connecting with locals and i think there's elements of that that you can do back at home um so so for instance when i moved to a new area i was i felt more like an explorer really kind of appreciating my surroundings and um traveling to places close to home but trying to see them with new eyes and new appreciation as if I was traveling and, and I think likewise like when when meeting new people it's it's you know taking that as opportunity to really connect and get to know people uh, the same way you might have done traveling so, so I think I guess it's hard to put a word on those it's, it's a, sh a slight shift in mindset and approach and perspective um, but I think a lot of that definitely did stem from that traveler mindset when you're exploring a new area and um, just being very present, I guess, and appreciating what you have in front of you, whether it's, you know, beautiful scene or just getting to know some locals and more about their life and, and being, I guess, I guess, very open minded to that as well. Mm, I think it's, it, it's, it's a common thing where I, I know when I came back and went back to my hometown, I saw it with completely different eyes. Yeah. You're looking at it again and go, I never noticed this or I've never been there. And this, you know, yeah. I've lived here for 20 years and never went there. And so I think that that's a it's a great thing to to come back and sort of re re look at things or understand that you know travel can just be down the road and it can be just as exciting as across the other side of the world. So, um, are there any? I know you mentioned you liked Asian food and all of this kind of thing. Is there anything um, food wise that you you enjoy here that you've brought back from your travels? Because I'm always interested in the food side of things and bringing a little bit of of taste back to to the UK. Yes, I did. I did do quite a few cooking classes. Um, so especially in Thailand. Um, yeah, I, I did cooking classes and 
I guess learned a lot there that I've kind of brought back and, and tried to continue doing here. I, I think I've always been quite an adventurous cook so I've, I you know I enjoy experimenting and, and trying new things but I think when you travel you do pick up things and um, I'm also a big tea fanatic so I bought a lot of loose tea <laughs> when I was traveling and quite a few teapots um, miraculously I was able to fit them into my backpack as it was bursting open um, so yes I guess uh, a lot of different ingredients and flavors and things like that, that I've kind of brought back and and tried to keep up. Um, I mean, I think we're fortunate here in the UK where there is such a mix of cultures and so much influence from around the world. But I think you get that kind of authentic twist when you're obviously traveling and mm. um, learn things on a bit more of a deeper level and, and just see how they work with food, which, yeah, is, is absolutely fascinating and obviously amazing to taste as well. Mm. No, it's, it was it was a big thing, certainly with my travels, that you'd be going around the markets or picking stuff up and try this, try this, never seen this before. And <laughs> certainly in Asia and things like that, you, just, you know, this there's fruits and things I'd never even heard of. Um, um, and it's it's fantastic. So, you know, we, we're back in the UK now. What advice would you give for somebody who was about to go traveling or, you know, the, the, that kind of whether it be mindset or, or looking at the world or outlook onto to life? What would you say to someone who's just starting that adventure? Yeah, I, I think go in um, being very open-minded and do a bit of research and preparation before to you know make sure you know the safety things, especially what you guys kind of um, do, which is amazing. I, I think there is that part is, is so important. And I think if possible, so talking to people who have uh, explored or traveled the region is, is quite helpful. Um, but I think above most, it is just being kind of open-minded and going there with, um being open i guess to learn to immerse yourself in the culture and not have any too many kind of preconceived um expectations on it because i think then you can really appreciate it for what it is and get more from it because there is an element of kind of what you put in is what you get out so i think having that kind of mindset um you can really get more out of um, but yeah, I, I guess anyone kind of thinking to go those is just do it, do, do your research and preparation, but just go there with an open mind and enjoy it and um, don't kind of go there with, don't come back with any regrets, you know, feel like you've made the most of being there and enjoying it and appreciating every moment you're there as well. Mm, brilliant, fantastic. Um, and the same question for someone who's about to start a business or they've got an idea and a concept, but they're maybe a little unsure, um, yeah. what, what would you, well, how would you advise in that situation? Um, well, actually similar to, in terms of kind of research and talking to people, I would definitely, if you're starting a business, try and network and speak to people who have either set up a business or, or are doing something similar to what you're doing. I think for me, that was actually a real game changer and you learn so much from other people and I think you can shortcut a lot of learnings. Um, and it can also, I think, give you the confidence because you're surrounding yourself with people who are, are or have essentially been in the same boat. So that would definitely be my advice. Try and network, get yourself into some kind of business um, circles or groups. There's tons online as well, just to learn from others and build up your confidence and share ideas. And I think that can kind of give you the boost to get it going. Um, but I, I'd always say just go for it. I think you can regret not doing it but you'll never regret trying and you know I look back and I'm just so grateful that I went for it so I think just go for it and find people to support you if, if you need to. Okay so have you got a final word of advice for either an entrepreneur or a traveler or somebody who's wanting to get out there and see the world? Yes so I think one motto that we use in our brand but is also something that I just personally try and live by is living life on your own terms so whether that is traveling the world or starting a business it's working out what is true and authentic to yourself um, to kind of live life in line with that and and I think linked into that, you then get that sense of freedom because you're being true to yourself and you're living life in your own work, in your own way. Um, so that would be my kind of final thoughts or words, uh, something I try and live by and something we try and promote through the business as well. Fantastic. Well, thank you, Nadia, for, for having a chat with us today. I think it's been a really insightful conversation and lovely to hear more about your brand. And it's I think it's a fantastic product. And um yeah, but best of luck for the future. And thank you for talking us, to us today. Thank you. And thanks so much for having me. It's been great.